after that we have a uh, question answer interaction program and uh, we'll uh, uh, whatever we don't understand or what we don't want to add more then we can have the chance to ask the questions so uh, I will uh, request Professor Laura Gonzalez to shed light on this uh, okay. uh, topics. Thank you. So you can hear me, okay? Yeah. yeah. If you would like me to stop or slow down or repeat or say in a different way, just let me know and I'm happy to, happy to do that. It's interesting, thank you all so much for having both of us here to um, share our work and I w I'm really interested in your feedback. Actually, when you were just saying that the word uh, digital was hard to translate into Nepali, that's really interesting to me. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about who I am and what my work is about and stuff like that, but I am interested in the combination of language and technology and really thinking about language as a technology because a lot of times when you say technology, especially in the West, people think you have to be, you have to know how to do computer coding or how to do something behind a computer screen. But actually, what some scholars have been saying now in, um, in discussions about technology is that actually the word digital starts with your digits, with your fingers, the ways in which you make sense of the world. Um, a scholar, Angela Haas, who, um, is an indigenous studies scholar and a technical communication scholar, was the first to make the argument, um, the first that I read about making the argument. The argument that it's not right to say that people who don't feel comfortable with computers are not, do not uh, use technology because we do. Everybody uses technology. We use our fingers, we use our face, we use our eyes, we make sense of the world, we communicate with those tools, and those two are technologies. And so I'm interested in the technology of c computers, but also the technology of language, of culture, of how we talk to each other, how we make sense of things together. And I think the combination of those things is um, really important and really powerful and something that I would like to continue collaborating with people about, which is one of the reasons why I'm here in Nepal, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, as well as um, our collaboration with Vibhushana and Critical Digital Humanities. So, just a little framing. Um, I was pronouncing that, um, but I appreciate anybody who teaches me. So, Danibat and gracias, that's in Spanish, gracias. And uh, thank you in, in the US. So, um, all of those ways of expressing my gratitude to you for welcoming me here to Lindu One Study Center and for taking time out of your day to spend time with both of us and hear about our work. Um, if you click on that URL, you'll have access to the presentation afterwards. So, there are some links and stuff. Um, um, if there's stuff you want to read more about later, you can uh, access that as well. And I'm happy to give that to you later as well. So, Okay, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about who I am and why I became interested in technology. Um, I recently published a book about uh, translation as a technology. This is the book, and I'm sharing it with you because uh, when I was working on this book, it was really important to me to have the physical book, but to also have ways that people can access the book digitally without having to have this physical book. And I think that's a good example of a um, combination of different types of technologies. My parents, as uh, somebody mentioned, I was born in Bolivia. My parents worked very hard for me to go study in the US. It was a family sacrifice. My whole family moved. Um, and it was very important that for, to them that I got the chance to study in the U.S. And so the idea of me writing a book and having my name on a book is very special to my family. Um, and so I wanted to have this. Like I wanted to have this copy that you can open. There's actually like a couple of pictures, you know. Um, so it's very special. But at the same time, I wanted people who maybe cannot purchase this or maybe they're far away and they can't have this shipped to also have access to the book. And so the book is both a book like this, but it's also a web text. And a web text is something, the link is there. If you click on it, um, I won't click on it now, but it takes you to all the same content, just in a digital space. And that, um, 
that is open access, so it's available and free for anybody to use and to access. So my students, when I ask them, please read this book so we can discuss the ideas, they don't have to pay. And so I think it's an example of a combination of different types of technologies and different parts of the humanities. In the humanities, as a field of study, we love books. And I'm no exception to that. It was very important for me to have a book. But also, uh, when we think about digital humanities, part of the movement is to make information free and open and accessible to more people. And so that is one of the big values of digital humanities, and later on we'll discuss of uh, critical digital humanities, the idea that if we think about humanities, humanness, what makes us human, um, communication, we can think about it both in face-to-face -face ways, but also in digital ways. So that's kind of the idea of digital humanities. And so what I'm interested in with Dibushina is figuring out how do we create digital tools, technologies, websites that are more are not just from one perspective, but are from many perspectives, from many languages, from many different backgrounds, um, where people, where it's not like we design a website for a specific community, but we design a website with a specific community for the specific community's needs, desires, wants, what the ideas that they want, um, the information that they want to share, without it being kind of an exploitation of different groups of people. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So the critical is, not just have something digital, have it online. It's not me coming here to Nepal, recording people, then going back and publishing it online. No, it's me coming with all of you and deciding together, if we want to do something digital, what would we do? What would it look like? What could it look like? What are the possibilities? And how do we create something that takes advantage of all of our expertise? Because the only expertise Expertise is not just the person who can code the website or put the website online. Expertise is all of us together, the ideas, the history, the things that we've lived together um, in combination with the computer coding, the websites. And through that combination, I think we can create things that are more accessible for people, but that are also more engaging for people and also more ethical um, in representing the many voices that the world has today. So um, that's kind of an introduction. Uh, to our work. This is a little bit difficult to see, um, but this is a, a famous kind of market in Bolivia. And when I first showed Babushina this, she was like, oh, I thought that was Nepal, just looking at it really quickly. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking it's Tomil. <laughs> um, but this is where I first started to think about language as a technology, because in the country that I'm from, it has over 42 um, recognize languages in the country, most of them indigenous languages. Spanish is widely used, but there are also many indigenous languages. And I'm from the part in Bolivia that is kind of a business hub for the country. So every day, a lot of people from all over the country come to this uh, area to sell products, provide services, to make a living, essentially. In this kind of market square, in this kind of um, place, I mean, I was just a little girl when, when I was there. Um, and I continue to go back. My parents still live there and everything. So I, I go back at least once a year. But in this area, you see, and you see it here too. I've noticed it here in Nepal as well. Language is not necessarily the only thing that we use to communicate. Words, not the only thing we use, right? And for indigenous communities, this is common sense. We use our bodies. If we don't speak the same language, I will draw something, show it to you, or I'll move my body, I'll point, I'll go over here. If I have a mobile phone, maybe I will look up something and show you a picture, right? Um, we, c we find ways of communicating as human beings that extend beyond one language or one modality of communication. We use a lot of different resources to communicate. And so as I started doing my studies, I kept thinking back to these instances, especially as I was reading about technology as a form of communication, a form of being creative, a form of showing uh, rhetoric. And rhetoric you know, can be defined in many different ways, but mostly it's a way to make meaning with other humans or non-humans environments, right? We make meaning in so many ways. And to me, people who speak multiple languages um, are very creative in how they make meaning. And in my research in this book, um, that's what I focused on, is how do people who speak multiple languages 
create meaning using words, but also movements and also digital tools and technologies. The combination of all of those things to me is very interesting and is something that I want to continue learning from different people with. Um, so, but it all goes back to where I'm from. I think um, it's important to always remember where you're from. And so for me, my research, I always think about this and where these ideas came up for me it was watching people try to communicate where they didn't have a common language to communicate. But they wanted to accomplish something. They wanted to buy something. They wanted to sell something. They needed directions. Something, right? If we have a task at hand, what we might call in rhetoric an exigence, um, we'll make do. We find ways of talking to each other and sharing ideas because we need to. So it's kind of a survival uh, translation, language, communication. That's how we survive. So as I continued with my studies, I started putting together uh, language, like I mentioned, technology, like I mentioned. But I think what connects these things for me the most is community. Um, so that's the idea of participatory design. So when we think about designing technologies, there's lots of different ways in which people can design technology. First, people thought about it like a systems-centered approach, which is the idea that I have to make this computer the best computer that I can. And I need to do all the best things for this computer to function properly, system-centered. Then there's another approach called user-centered approach, which is I need to think about who is going to use this computer and I need to design this computer to be, to be the most helpful to them. So there's, I'm the expert, let's say. I designed this computer for the user. That's a little bit better than a system-centered approach because it's not for what's best for the computer, but it's what's best for the users, right? But then there's another approach, and one that I like best, um, and that is a participatory, participant-based design, which is not that I'm the expert and I designed this for you, but we in this room together design, decide what do we want this computer to do? What is the best use of this computer? What needs do we have for how we're going to use this computer? How will having this computer influence the way in which we talk to each other, but also the space that we're in? How is it going to change things? Is that worth it? Right? So we decide all of those things together. So that's participatory design. So it's not system-centered. It's not user-centered. But it's a participatory approach to designing um, technology. And so for me, these three things are um, I have to keep these three things in close relationship when I do any kind of project, including coming here to speak with you all today. Um, so the image that I have here, actually, when I can find this online, it moves. And I was trying to think about how do I theorize language, community, and technology. And I was walking by a store, and I saw this child toy. And it's like a little circle like this, like you can see there. If you pull one side, everything shifts. If you pull another side, everything shifts. And I think it's the same thing with technology. You design something, you change the language, the whole system changes. You change the community, everything changes. You change the technology itself, everything changes. So we have to think about all of these things in relationship with each other. Um, and so that's kind of the work that I seek to do and the work that I would love to talk more with you about. Um, when thinking about technology, there are a lot of divides and a lot of hesitancies, especially from people in the humanities, especially from communities who maybe have been kept out of conversations about technology due to colonization, um, due to racism, due to many different factors. Um, and I think it's important to critique those technologies, but I also think it's important to envision and imagine better technologies, right? If technology is making all of us distracted, if technology is, uh, I don't know, people say a lot of things, taking our privacy away because we put everything on social media, okay, that's a critique and that's a good critique, but how do we imagine something that doesn't do that, that still allows me to talk to my mom in Bolivia when I'm in the United States? Right? If I'm not going to do it on Facebook because Facebook takes away my privacy and it distracts me, then how am I going to do it so that I can still have that connection with my mom 
but maybe we don't put it out there for the whole world to see, right? That takes some creativity and that takes some innovation. That takes some engaging with technology, not just from critique, but from building and design um, and doing things together. So I follow here Rupika Risam's article, uh, argument in New Digital, Digital Worlds, and she says, those of us who are equipped with the capacity for humanity's inquiry, which would be all of us, all of us as humans, um, and those of us who are committed to social justice have a responsibility to intervene in legacies of colonialism by creating projects to challenge the exclusions and the records of digital knowledge. So it's not only to say um, technology harms us, but then how do we change the technology so that it doesn't harm us? How do we change it? How do we change it together? Um, I also draw some of my research in terms of theory from the area of technical communication. In technical communication, there's a lot of focus on globalization um, and the idea that we cannot, we can no longer design something just for the U.S. or just for one country, but that we have to create something that can be shared widely. And I think that's important, but at the same time, we have to think about the impact of doing that. What is the impact of sharing information widely? Um, who is positioned in what way? So if we want to create a website about Nepal, for example, who is creating that website, why, who is represented there, um, who is not represented there, right? How is somebody positioned through this design? And those are all really important questions that if we think about globalization as a good thing, that's fine, but we have to think about the implications, the ethical implications of it. Um, in my book, I focused on working with two communities. And because I spoke Spanish in this initial project, because I speak Spanish, I wanted to work with communities whose languages I spoke and communities that I was a part of because I think that helped me understand what was happening better. So I worked with two organizations. One is a news broadcasting organization in Orlando, Florida, which is where I, my family first immigrated to. And the other one is a, a translation and interpretation office in Grand Rapids, Michigan, who is close to where I went to school at Michigan State University. So with these two communities over the course of about four years, I worked with them um, tracing how do they use language and technology. What technologies do they use? How do they use them? And how could we maybe design technologies that are more efficient and effective for this community that speaks not only English but also Spanish, right? And translates across both all the time. So in this uh, book project, I started with pretty, I thought were simple questions. Um, so I wanted to know what are the rhetorical practices that the multilingual communicators, so the people who speak Spanish and English in these two communities, what, um, what do they do to translate information? What tools and resources, so both technologies but also cultural tools, historical tools, do they use to translate information? Because by looking at this over the course of several years, recording, uh, having interviews with these participants, I was making the argument in this book that the act of translating across languages is a technology, and it's an important technology that requires a lot of expertise that, uh, especially research in the US where I'm at, where I'm from, sort of, um, we need to recognize that more. We need to recognize the importance of people who maybe don't see themselves as technologically savvy, but who use the technology of translation all the time. So I wanted to give you just one example of the types of research that I did. Um, so this is from one of my participants. Her name is Natalie. She was translating a news story from, the, from an online newspaper from English into Spanish, and she was translating it into Spanish because she wanted to make the information um, accessible to her community who doesn't speak English. So she was translating it. To research this process, I interviewed Natalie several times, but I also recorded her computer screen because she was doing this translation online. I worked with a lot of translators, and um, the use of digital technologies in translation is becoming more and more important. Sometimes there are people who are, are very skilled with language and translation, but a lot of the documents that we have to translate are very technical, and you have to um, have some understanding of a computer. So there's like the combination of having the language skills and the technology skills that I was interested in. So I recorded uh, the translator's computer screens. I used the software I can tell you about that you like install with their permission to record their computer screen so you can see kind of when they're translating something, how do they do it, what websites do they go to, that kind of thing. So in this instance, Natalie was translating 
a news article about a park um, that was going to threat, threaten, it's, the title of the article was Development um, Threatens a Park. So the development of buildings was threatening a park in her city. So she was translating this news, sto this news story and she paused in her translation uh, because she didn't know how to translate the English word threaten um, into Spanish. She didn't know what's the best translation. So she went to Google Translate. That little symbol is for Google Translate. She put in threaten, and Google Translate gave her several options. The first option was amenazar. And Natalie said, I don't want to use that word. Google Translate didn't give me a good option then. I don't want to use that word. And I said, why not? And she said, because amenazar is like I'm physically threatening you. But we're talking about a park. It's not talking about threatening a person. So I need another word. So what Natalie decided to do is she put in the word harm into Google Translate. And then she got a, another word, daño, that she then um, changed to the word daña. And that's the word that she ended up using to translate threaten. And so I asked Natalie, I said, why did you, you knew that you didn't want to use the first choice. Why did you put in another word in English to Google Translate? Why did you not find a synonym for amenazar? Or why did you not ask somebody else? And she said, I decided to put in the word harm because Google Translate, it works better if you work mostly in English. So if I want to translate something from Spanish to Nepali, for example, on Google Translate, it's easier. It'll, you'll get more options if you translate from Spanish to English, English to Nepali. And I did some research about how Google Translate is developed, and this came to be true. The algorithms, right, so the, the code that is used to develop uh, translation tools like Google Translate is developed with English at the center. So English is, has the most options, and if you input English, you're going to have the most options for your translation. So even though Google Translate can translate from Spanish to Nepali, it's better if you do Spanish to English, English to Nepali. And so after looking at this um, over several years, I provide you know, kind of a critique of the, these algorithms that position English at the center. And I say, why should English be at the center? Like, There's so many other options, so many other ways for us to develop tools. Um, and so that is why I became interested in not only the first two questions that I shared with you earlier, but then the third one. Okay, so if all of these technologies are designed with Western perspectives, English at the center, everything else is marginal, then how do we design something that is not like that? Something that's different, something that puts other people at the center, not the West, not English all the time. How do we do that? And I, I'm still working through those, those questions and those ideas, but that's kind of the question that I think um, in some ways brought Vibhushan and I together and kind of brought us here to Nepal because as this was happening, um, I received an email from Vibhushan. I was, t I was uh, teaching at University of Texas El Paso and uh, Vibhushan was in my class. It was a graduate seminar on rhetoric and technology. And from the first day, from the first day that she was in that class, I was like, Vibhushana is so brilliant. And she is, she's so brilliant. And we were talking about different ideas, different projects that students could take on in their class. And she was talking about how Nepal is represented in online spaces. So if you Google Nepal, what do you see? What, what comes up online? And she was telling me, you know, sometimes those things that come up online when you might Google Nepal are very monolithic. They present only one version of Nepal, and it's not a version from Nepal, Nepalese or Nepal itself. Um, and so through those conversations, um, she started to design a, a digital archive of Nepal street photography, which she will share with you. And this is how we became interested in critical digital humanities and doing the project of designing something that shows different versions of Nepal in online spaces. And that's what we're doing here in Nepal now. That's what we would love your feedback on. Um, but I'm linking here to an article uh, that Vibhushana and I wrote together recently was published on May 16th about how do you develop critical digital humanities pedagogy and projects. So how do you do, back to the question that I had, how do we design technologies with and for communities? This is just one small, um, I guess, effort in that direction and, and that's kind of why we're here. 
and she'll tell you more about that today. So um, the workshop that we're doing, um, that we're kind of sharing a little bit about with you today, is on critical digital humanities and participatory design, because the idea is coming to Nepal, meeting with people, and designing something that is digital, but that it also shows the diversity of what Nepal is, what South Asia is more broadly. Um, so we're putting together critical digital humanities, participatory design, and digital archiving to do that, and Vibhushana will share a little bit more about um, what that can look like. What we seek to do is to build um, kind of a hub, some more collaborations with other people here in the area um, to develop a network across South Asian countries interested in critical digital humanities to build digital representations of South Asia that counter and extend the established narrative. So how do we change what might come up when you do a Google search of Nepal? Well, we change it by building things that are different, right? showing other examples, other perspectives, um, to make space for connecting the humanities and the digital through South Asian perspectives. So if we're going to do something about Nepal, then let's do it from Nepal with people in Nepal, right? rather than me sitting in my office in Texas trying to envision what this might be. That's not an ethical way to approach this. That is not a participatory design. That is something else and something that can be very violent. So. Some of the things that we're doing, um, engaging in critical building, so not just critiquing what's there, but then building other things, doing individual and collaborative research projects, doing participatory archives, so it's not to say this is one archive and this is all that there is about Nepal, but finding ways of incorporating other perspectives, designing and testing platforms so that they're not just for one person or one perspective, engaging in user research, so seeing how usable and accessible the things that we make can be, um, and then collaborating on publications, presentations, and other things that we'd love to talk with you more about as well. So I'll hand it off to Vibhushan and out to tell you a little bit more detail about the critical digital humanities. Thank you so much. Um, you tell me that hashtag you use God Rasa and religion works up God Rasa. You must be international police man. Must be international. Must be international police team. When you go, then you tell me God is what they call him. That is South Asian research centers. Okay, suffer one me. Suffer the past. Only that way. Only you go to you do URL. You need to link to me. Then you get it. No one you get. No one. Then you just open information. Get no one. South Asian research center. Let's say. And you do analyze say your critical digital humanities and participatory design works of Kulagi invite God and this was your value to it. And you ask that I'm use God so which means uh, critical digital humanities in Nepal 2019. Um, thank you. So uh what's a key digital humanities one go kyo on it this critical digital humanities one go kyo on very critical digital humanities Nepal kyo get your shift zoom and shift. Right? Uh, uh, the Only uh, critical dis uh, digital humanities. My cam It has been years. People have been working in digital humanities uh, for many years. There are first time say digital humanities when you word use work. Oh, my example. That's 2005. What about 2008? Now. So as a discipline, it is new. People have been working in this area for so many years, but they have started naming it digital humanities since 2005 or 2008. You know, now, guys, you are like, this is used by us, you know. There are other kind of scholars like you, and so on. That means, this area, I am working with two previous people, you know. Digital humanities, one of them, right? Or, if you link to the link, Every time refresh that new one, or read just to know a definition of the digital humanities. This comes out of what? Because there is no one definition of digital humanities. Scholars, le researchers, le afno through what? Afno, afno area, what? Afno word, what? Just as they like define words, any to know digital humanities or what? So many way answer. And I was sharing with you yesterday that. Just like I mean, like more like first time, say digital humanities, but open what I do. So here it is. One, they come. One is my professor from here, Arun Gupta, Professor Arun Gupta. The other professor say 2017, maybe before I went to US, Scott Kleinman, one new nuncha, California State University. 
को डिरेक्टर हो डिजिटल ह्युमानिटी सेन्टर को डिरेक्टर हैन अनि उहाँले नै के भन्नु भन्दा खेरि एउटा मात्र देयर इज नो वन डेफिनेशन अफ डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज अनि एउटा फोटो हामीले खिचेर अस्ति हालेका थियौ फोटो चाहिँ डिजिटल मेरो त ठ्याक्कै डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज लाई एक्सप्लेन गरिरहेको बेलामा त्यो फोटो अलि ब्लरी छ के फोटो अलि ब्लर छ एउटाले कल्ले पोस्ट गर्नु भएछ अनि त्यसपछि हि रोड कि डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज इज ब्लरी के मतलब के त्यो फोटो र बुझ्नु भयो त्यो भनेको के जोक हुन्छ नि कि डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज इज ब्लरी के एक्चुअली त्यो फोटो को पछाडी पनि डिजिटल आई ह्याभ टोल्ड यू अबाउट दिस राइट सो अनि दैट वाज रियली नाइस के डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज इज एक्चुअली ब्लरी देयर इज नो वन डेफिनेशन अफ डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज तर त्यसलाई पनि डिफाइन गर्ने तरिकामा कुन पोजिसनमा बसेर डिफाइन गरिरहनु भएको छ वेस्टमा बसेर तपाईसँग सबै प्रिभिलेज छ भनौँ न टेक्नोलोजिकल प्रिभिलेज छ एकदमै सबै रिसोर्सेस छ उसले के भन्छ भन्दाखेरि नट नेसेसरी है फिर तो बसर भन्द में उसे सब भाई तर उ के भाषा भादा खेल डिजिटल एज अ टूल यूज करने मत हो कि बिल्ड करने जस्तु एप्लीकेशन्स बिल्ड करने तो नगरे समय डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज भैन भाई तर अर्क बाटो ने कि भाषा भादा खेल बिल्ड करने रही क्रिटिक करने हो संग बसर जस हमी जो डिस्कोर्स को जो तब लिंबू वन स्टडी सेंटर जो डिस्कोर्स होर है त्यो प्लस जल्ले टेक्नोलॉजी बिल्ड कर डिजिटल डिजिटल टूल्स मेथड्स बिल्ड कर सब को कोलाबोरेशन नहीं डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज हो तेरे यो भी चाहिए देर आर सो मेनी डिफ्रेंट डेफिनेशन्स अफ डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज हाई तो सब डेफिनेशन बड़ा मैं अलग चित्त बुझने वाक मेरे डेफिनेशन हो तर मैं अरुब बड़ो कर नट ओन्ली माइन आई एम आई बिन कंबाइनिंग सो मेनी अदर स्कलर्स एंड बिल्डिंग माई ओन डेफिनेशन से सो मे भू भादा कि डिजिटल यूजिंग डिजिटल टूल्स एंड मेथड्स टू एड्रेस एंड इंगेज इन ओल्ड एंड न्यू क्रिटिकल एंड क्रुसियल क्वेश्चन्स इन ह्युमानिटीज है मानविकी को ह्युमानिटीज को डिसिप्लिन बड़ जो हमें एज धेरे भैनी देखी जो क्वेश्चन्स हमें रेज कर जो तब यहाँ रिसर्च सेंटर में यू स्टडी सेंटर में कस्तो कस्तो क्वेश्चन सोन है जिस लिंबुआन स्टडी सेंटर तो रिसर्च कसरी करने तो मेथोडोलॉजीज के यूज करने है कल इंटरव्यू लिने हो कि अथवा कई ठावे गए आप थुप्रे मेथोडोलॉजीज है थुप्रे क्वेश्चन्स सब क्वेश्चन्स रेथोडोलॉजी प्लस डिजिटल टूल रेथड जब यूज करो ह्युमानिटीज में सोधिने सब क्वेश्चन्स प्लस डिजिटल टूल रेथड जब कंबाइन कर संगे लिया कोलाबरेट कर जब काम कर I define define it as digital humanities when we use digital tools and methods to engage in the questions that we have been asking for so long in the discipline of humanities and so many other disciplines uh, that is digital humanities for me तर मैं पची के लगे भाई टू थाउज सेवेन्टीन में डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज मात्र यूज कर थे पच्चीस आई डेन्ट फील लाइक कि दैट्स इनफ फर मी मैं के लगे डिजिटल ह्युमानिटीज में मैक्सिमम क्वेश्चन कहीं टूल को बारे में मात्र सो तर कल्चरल क्रिटिशिजम ले रही के यो तो आई थिंक दिस इज अ वेरी गुड प्लेस टू टॉक अबाउट इट क्यों यहाँ तो कल्चरल क्रिटिशिजम ले खोजे यो ठाव बने को है कि मल्टिपल पर्सपेक्टिव बड़ मल्टिपल पोइंट अफ भ्यू बड़े लिंबू वन सोसाइटी सोसाइटी मात्र कतिजना इसो गुगल कर इंडिया र चाइना को बीच में हो आई नेवर वॉन्टेड टू इंट्रोड्यूस ने एज द दुई तर या दुई ढुंगा बीच को तरुल आई नेवर वॉन्टेड टू डू दैट एंड आई आई यूज टू से कि ओ आम नट दैट गुड एट जियोग्राफी बिकज आई नेवर वॉन्टेड टू इंट्रोड्यूस ने थ्रू इंडिया एंड चाइना तो कारण रिथिंकिंग साउथ एशिया के भादा खेल तस्त क्वेश्चन कसरी चाहे अब अर्क क्वेश्चन तीर जाने के जल्द नेपाल हो ते नहीं कसले सो इंडिया ए ने छिमेकी हो तिमरुन तो सो है चाइना सोन तो क्वेश्चन मैं एवरी टाइम मैं तो क्वेश्चन सो मैं मन भी पर्न छोड़ो एंड इट्स नट देयर फल्ट क्यों भादा खेल हम प्रिजेन्स छेन के हम प्रिजेन्स जहाँ बड़ हमें इन्फर्मेशन भेट इन्फर्मेशन मैक्सिमम आजकल डिजिटल मीडिया पर इन्फर्मेशन भेट तैं हम प्रिजेन्स तेरी छेन है हम प्रिजेन्स कुन वे में मात्र भादा खेल सीरियसली इसो याद कर हम इंटरनेशनल मीडिया में कुन बेला में प्रिजेन्स पो भादा खेल पैला रोयल मैसेकर को टाइम में एक्चुअली बेस्कन प्रिजेन्स भो ते बेस्कन प्रिजेन्स अर्थक्वेक को टाइम में भो अलि प्रेजेन्स जब एलजीबीटी लजर रामस चेंज होना थाली में ते पी अलि भो है यो एलजीबीटी ल तो हम धेरे ठूल कुरा थी तर ते पाएन के प्रिजेन्स पाएन इंटरनेशनल मीडिया में हमीर तो उन्नीर कसरी देखा हमी तो डैमेज भक्ट्री हो 
हमी तो पोलुटेड कंट्री हो हमी तो गरीब छाइन अर्क आर बोल दून पर्व हम जो यो खाल हम जो पोर्ट्रेयल डिजिटल मीडिया में तो डिजिटल मीडिया कारण एवरी टाइम मैं कस्त क्वेश्चन सोचे भादा खेल ए नेपाल आक अब एक तो एकदम नाम सुने पर एकदम गरीब मूलुक अर्क नाम नसुने पर यह नाम ही नसुने मूलुक तो पक्क भी गरीब होगा है मैं कि सोदे सोच क्वेश्चन सुरू सुरू में फनी लगे ते पी कस रिस उठन थाले क्या बिकज इट वॉज नट जस्ट अबाउट मी दे वर नट जस्ट आस्किंग अबाउट लाइक ओ टेल अस अबाउट योर कल्चर सक इट वॉज अबाउट टेल अस अबाउट नेपाली बिइंग इन द यूएस कल्चर सक है अब कसो भादा तो पर्सनल क्वेश्चन भैन क्या मेरे लिए अब तो पर्सनल पर्सनल क्वेश्चन न भर यो जियोग्राफी यो कम्युनिटी को लगी जो टाइप को क्वेश्चन भो अभी मैं के भाई भादा खेल एकचोटी तस्ते गई गई रहें धेरेचोटी सोच सकते थे मैं तो क्वेश्चन अभी मैं एकचोटी हमी साथी को घर में हमी अब सेयरिंग अब लाइक पैटिज सो उबर में चले गई रहो एटा साथी थे व्हाइट मेल थी कैलिफोर्निया को थी अस पच्चीस अब तो दिवसभरी एकदम काम गए हमें उबर चढ़ो गाड़ी तो टैक्सी चढ़ो भि गए मोबाइल में गेम खेल थाल बोलते बोल कायर्ड थी म मेरे साथी ने बिहान देखिए काम कर टायर्ड थे ऊ बोल थाले ड्राइवरसंग बोल थाले पे अब उसको एक्सेंट उसको देखने सब तरीका ऊ व्हाइट अमेरिकन अमेरिकन भाई था भैया मे म बोलता भी बोल मे बी ही थट कि आई डोट नो हाउ टू स्पीक इन इंग्लिश आई डोट नो ते पी अस पच्चीस अब द वे आई लुक अभी उसे मैं अच्छी एक छीन मजा के गफ गए लाइक दे आर बडिज दे हेव जस्ट मेड बट दे स्टार्ट टॉकिंग लाइक एज इफ दे आर बडिज एंड देन लाइक द पर्सन आक्स मी सो वेर आर यू फ्रम एंड आई सेट लाइक नेपाल एंड सुने को रही उसे कतई नेपाल भाई सुने को रही एंड देन ओ यू फ्रम नेपाल सो टेल अस अबाउट कल्चर सक हाई दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ही आक्स मी मेरे साथी अब भाई बिकज माइकल नोज दैट दैट इज द वर्स्ट क्वेश्चन टू बी आक्स टू मी ही नोज माई फ्रेंड न्यू दैट एंड ही वॉज लाइक ओ नो यू नो लाइक यू डिन आस्क हर दैट क्वेश्चन सो उसे अस पच्चीस अभी मैं के भादा खेल तैंत एकदम इंग्लिश गीत बजाई रहा थी तो बच्चे देखिए सुनी रखो हो सुनी रखो अभी मैं इसो तो ड्राइवर के भो गीत है भाई क्या तो गीत है हो भे को कल्चर सक भे है यो डिस्टेंस कवर कर कल्चर सक होने को कल्चर सक कल्चर भाई तो धेरे कम्प्लेक्स फिनोमिना होनी है मैं यहाँ को पैट्रिया कल्चर सक कर आई डोट नीड टू क्रस द डिस्टेंस एंड आई डोट नीड टू गो टू यूएस टू गेट दैट कल्चर सक मैं यहाँ को पैट्रिया एकदम नराम कल्चर सक कर यहाँ को जात पात को कुछ कल्चर सक कर यहाँ को एलजीबिटी को अगेन्स्ट में गिने कुछ कल्चर सक कर आई डोट नीड टू क्रस द डिस्टेंस एंड दैट्स अभी मैं उस एंड आफ्टर दैट आई फेल्ट लाइक वी हेड अलरेडी स्टार्टेड वर्किंग इन दिस प्रोजेक्ट बट देर आर सो मेनी थिंग्स हेपनिंग एंड विच केप्ट एन लाइक काइंड अफ रिमाइंडिंग मी अबाउट आवर प्रेजेंस इन डिजिटल वर्ल्ड हमी फेसबुक में छो ट्विटर में छो तर हम बारे में स्टोरी कस खोजे तो जो स्पेस हो जो वेबसाइट हमें आपने बारे में बना वेबसाइट हमें आपने बारे में बना डिजिटल आर्काइव में हम खास प्रेजेन्स छेन के एंड देन लाइक दे यूज टू आस्क मी हाउ नेपाल इज लाइक धेरे क्यों छेन धेरे डिजिटल मीडिया में धेरे छेन जान हे छौपाड़ी सीस्टम देख् एंड देन अर्थक्वेक देख् अभी मैं बिचारा ठाँ है एज इफ लाइक वी ऑल आर लिविंग द सेम लाइफ है यहाँ को डिफ्रेन्सेस देखते हैं अभी मैं सोचे कि सो हाउ इज नेपाल एंड आई सेट लाइक इफ आई इफ आई एंसर यू लाइक हाउ नेपाल इज इट्स जस्ट कन बी माई पर्सपेक्टिव अफ ने मैं छु काठमंडू में छू हो बौद्ध में छू हो अलि तो पोइंट अफ भ्यू बड़ी नेपाल देखि तर ने तो देखिदन तो तो मेरे पर्सपेक्टिव को नेपाल देखि एंड देन आई फेल्ट लाइक यू वी 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 नीड टू ब्रिंग आउट सो मेनी नारेटिव्स फ्रम ने अभी आई स्टार्टेड बिल्डिंग वन डिजिटल आर्काइव विथ द हेल्प अफ लॉरा आई स्टार्टेड बिल्डिंग हम दुजा सी सो सी लाइक दिस इज द डिस्कशन एट वी अलवेज यूज टू हेव लाइक सिंस द टाइम वी मेट वन एंड अदर एंड वी न्यू दैट लाइक वी थिंक अ लाइक एंड देन तेल नहीं अलि बिस्तारे ना वी नीड टू वर्क टुगेदर जस्तों खाल थे बिकज सी आक्स सेम काइंड अफ क्वेश्चन सी इज नेवर सैटिस्फाइड विथ हर वर्क बिकज लाइक सी वॉन्ट्स टू डू मोर मैं आपको काम बड़ ठीक भो जो फील होते हैं अज करने कि अज करने कि जो भाई वी स्टार्टेड प्लांग फर दिस वर्कसप कि क्रिटिकल डिजिटल ह्युमैनिटीज टूल्स डिजिटल टूल्स मेथड्स लाई कल्चरल क्रिटिशिजम में मिक्स कर अब कसरी नेपरेटिवस लेने इफ समोन आस्मी हाउ नेपाल इज लाइक आई कैन जस्ट टेल दम टू गो टू दिस मल्टिपल वेबसाइट्स 
And then multiple websites, the way we planned is, you have a workshop and participatory design, how did you plan it? We started building one new website since yesterday. Maybe like I can give you the, like it has just, we have just started building it, but it will come to some, uh, it will start looking something mm -hmm. after this works up. Uh, RethinkingSouthAsia.com, or I'll give you the uh, the link in a while. I'm not going to plan. I'm going to plan. I'm going to plan. I'm going to plan. I'm going to plan. It's not that we're going to tell their stories. It's not that we're going to talk about them. They will talk about themselves. They'll write their own stories. Their website, man. But we'll, we are capable enough uh, for speaking for everyone too. Okay? Now everyone will write their own story. And Izo like some few, few days back, like one, uh, if you remember, Pragya was asking me, um, because I'm building a digital archive, and one of the participants, uh, who is also my student, like she asked me, ki, uh, no, rep representation ko kura mala mon por Nepali society represent Gorsu and you just the power that they represent Gorsa, okay? The voice now only represent Gorni and Usko voice book. So I never liked the idea of representation. Only Nepal, US go, Egdomi top top at the South Asian Studies program go website here, Nubone, maximum South Asian Studies go US Nabako program go photo, Ru, Edakari, Posupatinath, Bonaros. On this uh, Southeast Asia, ko, pani ekdam hi repeat hui. Bhai rani image aur unsa ni? Tu matra dehinsa ke ekdam hi repeat. I have never been to Philippines. I have never been to other countries. But I can recognize those images because they have been repeated so often. Ki mala the thake dehni bhi theke. Ani mala lagya ki thei kura repeat karnu sone. Tro thul thulo kamgi na gori run paro. If if you need to, if you are repeating the same things again and again. We need to start building website, digital archive, blogging, technologies. This is in the digital media. We have no presence with 20 to 25 uh, participants. We have to do the same thing. We have different stories. We have to do the same thing. 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 We have to do I am a story. I have a story. I a story. I have a story. I have a story. US have a Washington DC have a Trump I have a US one, you Trump matra pani hoy Washington DC matra pani hoy nanta. Athaba tyo thul thul building pani hoy na. Athaba tyo ako gori bi pani hoy nanta. Sapay hoy ni US pani ko da. Tese gori Nepal pani na sapay ho. Chow party pani sa. Ortho ek pani ako tyo. Resources ko kami sa garo sa amlay. Tare isa ni discourse ko ni community pani ta sani. Ni yo discourse ko ni gori ni community kin deha ho dene ke tya ni ra. Ki yaha pani kosa le discourse gori raza. And here, when you say, "Cosa change the change le oni mane discourse." Tio kina deha ho daina kina tio baat ke ke road deha ho ja. Tio bani true ho, yo bani true ho ni ta. So how to bring, uh, like, how to make those 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 narratives, those stories about Nepal um, come in uh, digital media? Unsa ni? So this ko lagi je basically uh, critical digital humanities Nepal bani ko je Nepal bada abo suru karne ke. Um, participate in design, so participatory design and critical digital humanities. So thank you so much. Like this is, um, I mean, there are other slides, but basically I talk, like we talk about the same thing in the other slides too. But Pachi, you, can, you have access to that if you want to go through that. And if you have any questions, you can, Pachi, when you sit down, sir, after today. Um, so thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your nice presentation. And as you told us, it's a drawing picture. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you also can in the same. I don't know. But I, 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 I would find it a little bit different. Blurry uh, window open. Mm. Window is blurry, but it is open. You can, you can uh, define yourself whatever you feel like that. So this is quite... Uh, uh, but now, after the presentation of two 
experts, let's say, from this, uh, uh, for this uh, topics, we came to know that we have to design our own perspective uh, to present ourselves in the uh, digital communities or digital world. So, not from the point of view of India, not from the point of view of uh, China or whatever. Nepal also should present, should be represented or should be present in its own way, in its own terminology, terms and everything. So, that way it is quite interesting and this is the world of digital right now. So, even we are not familiar with this terminology and terms, these topics, but it is going to be very, very interesting for our country and for our people. Let's uh, start uh, putting questions and uh, uh, queries uh, to our experts. You have anything in Nepali or in English, both. It is because we have bo uh, resources for both languages here. L let's start. Who is the first uh, uh, to ask any questions? Okay, hmm. Santos Ji. Do you think machine ma sabi ko ano paro? Bani raay cha yo abhiyan dusto lagyo. Ina ti mane bhiyo ano paro? Yota ko matre ano bhai na bani dusto lagyo. Aur tisma awa amro Nepal ko ta human resources yo ramro software banana kisim ko ta ina yo ramro apps or banana khal ko ne amra ta bikas paise ek chaena ina. Ani kya na? ไอ้สตอบัสตามาอยู่กระอเมริกาสิ่งก่อนนะปัสสาวะเนี่ยลากูไอ้นะที่เกิดเช่นมาแล้วเจ้ามาเจ้าอีสติดดีเจ้าอ
I mean, we have been to uh, Google, uh, Google's office like uh, in May, right? In May. Seattle, I got Google office, I got you. Main office, I got you. Then you know, there is no, uh, uh, is there, is there, kura, aru, brainstorm, or engineers, or researchers, writers, or UX uh, uh, field. Ko. And what this called, open you, what is this company expert, open you, and a user experience. Uh, this man say, yay question, my list, what they could Google man, Nepal type one, you know this question. Who are wrong, sir? I'm not making out, they know. You, 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 uh, look into, uh, no, no, solve, why not? Solve, like it's a collaboration science, or look into, keep it as a key, key, so as a China only key, a bank or something that he powers on it. China type got a key also, maybe one for the inaki, otherwise Google could through a search engine or a cost of information also, like China go by China go government go by my site. You know, Tony don't hear some of your powers on it. I mean, a life stop got a money or go to Amy Sanga. I know, but I'm not the government or go camera. I'm like, I know, I mean, I'm the run of a lot of also. I just got his safety information. I does, I know, good host, bad host, information. I said, of a good or bad, too tired, only kick. I'm gonna say, of your area is help. Gorsa, okay, you know, they were talking so the question the egg domain important question. No, I think like I answered your question to some extent. I, uh, it's China, anyone who. 